So by default, Vim is an incredibly powerful text editor, but it becomes even more powerful once you start including things like plugins. So today, that's what we're going to have a look at how to do. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. We are at 61 as of the time of the recording this video, and I'm trying to hit 100 by the end of the year, and it's looking more and more likely every single day, and your help would be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today the program we're going to be working with is a very simple plugin manager for Vim called Vimplug. So you can actually install plugins with Vim and with NeoVim by just copying them into a specified directory, but all Vimplug is going to do for you is to actually just automate that process so you don't have to worry about it. So I would recommend just using it. If you really want to, then I guess I can put a link to the Arch Linux wiki or the Vim wiki that'll explain how to do it, but I'm not going to be doing that in this video. So to install Vimplug, there's four different ways you can do it. Two for regular Vim, two for NeoVim. So if you're using regular Vim, if you're on a Unix-based system, so Linux or Mac OS, you can just run this curl command in here. So I'll leave a link to the GitHub in the description down below so you can actually see what this command is for yourself. If you're on Windows using PowerShell, then there's a command in here for you. I, however, am using NeoVim, so I would want to run this command. Or if I was on Windows, then I would use the PowerShell version of it. So I've already run this command prior to starting this video, so we can actually use Vimplug without worrying about it installing. So the file you want to edit is just your vimrc, or if you're using NeoVim, you want to edit your init.vim. So I'm going to be using my NeoVim config. So that is in my config folder, in my nvim folder, in init.vim. So the section you want to add in here, the two lines you want to add before we actually do anything else with plugins is this call plug hash begin and then the path to where plugged is. So I will leave this command in the description down below because it is going to be the same if you use that curl command regardless of your system. And then at the bottom you want to add call plug hash end and then open close brackets. I'll leave that in the description down below as well so you guys can just copy that in and then just stick whatever plugins you want directly in there without having to worry about anything else. So there's a bunch of different ways you can install plugins so I'll go over to the Vimplug page right now and show you how you can actually do it. So there's this shorthand notation, which is the notation you're going to be using basically all the time because there's really no reason to use anything else. So this is where you put the author of the GitHub. It might work with GitLab, I actually don't know, but the author of the GitHub and then the name of the GitHub. Or you can put in a, I guess any, if you can't use GitHub, then any Git URL will work. You can put multiple plug installs on the same line. I never actually do this though. So these are the main three you're ever going to be using. So that I'll talk about the others in a moment, but basically if it's on GitHub, just use this. It's just shorter to write it. If you have anything that's on GitLab or SourceForge or anywhere else that you can install or you can keep Git repositories, then just use this. And I guess if you want to save lines, then do this. So. You can also do things like on-demand loading. So you can load a plugin only when a certain condition has been met. I'm not actually sure exactly what this condition here would be, but for this one here, this will only load the Vim Fireplace plugin for the closure files that this person is using. Or you can also, if you're pulling from a Git repository, load a branch that is not the main or the um, sorry the master branch because by default it will just pull whatever the master branch code is. So if say I don't know you're writing your own plugin and you want to pull from the dev branch, for example, then you can do that option in here. You can also do things like tagged releases. So with Git, you can actually tag specific releases. So those are releases that you actually release to the public, and you can pull directly from that. There's other options you can pass in as well, so you don't have to just pass in the tag. You can pass in whatever this RTP is. I'm not actually sure. So you can also do things like install plugins outside of your Vimplug directory. So there's a specific directory where your plugins are actually installed to. But if you have a plugin that you've installed in another location, then you can actually run it with Vimplug still without actually having to worry about anything else. I'm not sure what this one in here does. Plugin outside, I think that might, actually I, I 
don't even want to say what that does because I'm not 100% sure. I've never had to run it myself. Okay, so I think we now have a fairly solid understanding of how to actually put stuff in your VimRC to say that it needs to be installed. But just putting it in your VimRC like this isn't going to install the plugin. So we're going to go through an example with this. So let's say, for example, you want to install Vim Multicurse. We can do this because it's directly from GitHub. So we can copy this name in here and we can come back to my RC file or my init file, I guess because it is NeoVim, and we can just drop this name directly in here. And now what we want to do is we want to go colon, plug, and then install. And that will now download the plugin. Actually, it doesn't because that was my bad. So first you want to actually save the file and then just open up another version of NeoVim or regular Vim. I've noticed that if you save the RC file because it's not actually going to reload the RC file until you reload Vim. There might be a way to do that, but the easiest way is just to actually just reload the application. So now if we run plug install, now it's going to install that plugin. So it'll take a couple of seconds to do that. It shouldn't be too long and now it's already done. So now we should have multi cursors installed. So let's say you've had Vim plug installed and an update for it has been released and you want to actually download that update. So how would you go about doing that? So that's fairly simple. To upgrade Vim plug itself, we do plug upgrade. So we'll run that now because I've never actually upgraded it. So maybe there is an upgrade available. So upgrade, we run that. And I think that just runs in the background or something. Yep, cool. Now Vim plug has been updated. And let's say your plugin has got an update. So how we go about doing that? So we can do plug update. I think that if you do it without a name, it's just gonna update everything. We'll try that. So plug update. But you can also specify a name and that will then upgrade that specific plugin. Yep, cool. It'll just do them all when you just don't specify a name. So we've updated my plugin and if we press D, that'll then show the updates. Cool. So what about uninstalling plugins? So the way that you go about doing this is you can go, first you have to actually remove the plugin from this list. So let's say we don't want multi curses anymore. So we remove that, we can save it and quit open up a new version of NeoVim and go plug clean and this should uninstall it. Yep. And now it's going to give us a prompt. And do we want to delete all the directories that are using this? Then we can go, yep. And now that has removed all of the directories we had before. So I guess I had another plugin in there that I hadn't actually uninstalled. So that had gone and uninstalled that one as well. So if we press Q, that should take us back and yep, cool. So there's a few more commands that you can run. These aren't going to be really useful most of the time, but if you're having some sort of issue or maybe you just want to know what's changed, then you can run these commands. So plug status will let you know if there are any errors with the plugins or if there's some reason why it's crashed. So plug status. And as we can see, all of my plugins are working just fine. And the other one is that's similar to what we had before. We could bring up the change log. So we can actually bring that up at any time by going plug diff. And that will just show us the latest updates for all of our plugins. And you can also create a snapshot. So if for some reason you want to revert back to this version of your Vim plugin configuration without having to go and manually do it, then you can do that. So I've never found a use for that because I have never had to revert back to a situation. But maybe if, I don't know, you're migrating to another system or you're trying to bring your config over to another system, maybe, I don't really know what the use for that is. Or you could possibly be testing a plugin configuration. Maybe you're doing some plugin development and you want to have a known stable build to work from. So if we come further down on the GitHub, there is just some information about the plug options in here, the global options. But the thing I wanted to mention was this on-demand loading of plugins. So I've never actually used this myself, but maybe someone in the comments will actually have some use for this. And if you do, I'll leave this in the description down below so you can actually check this out. Because if there is some good use for this, then go ahead and use it. Maybe if you've got a ton of plugins, this is a problem. But because I'm only using, I think five, was it? Something like that. It doesn't really take that much time to load up all my plugins. But if you've got like 20, 30, 40, 50, maybe you only want some loaded for some types of files. Maybe you want some for others. And if you try to load them all at the same time, then you're going to have some loading errors. Or not some loading errors, I guess, some loading delays and that would be really annoying for you, I guess. So one last thing I wanted to mention before this video ended is that Vimplug isn't the only Vim plugin manager. There actually are others, but I've never had any experience with them myself, so I couldn't say if they're any good. So we've got Vimplug and there's Vundle, Pathogen, Dane.Vim, 
Vault, what else was on this list? Janus and async run.vim. I don't know if any of them are actually good. All I know is that vim plug works and there's no real reason to use anything else. So if you've tried out any of the others, then let me know if they're any good, but I'm probably gonna be sticking with vim plug because all I need for it to do is pull from a git repo and copy it into a directory. It doesn't need to do anything else. Having it be able to upgrade stuff natively is actually really useful, but besides that, nothing else for it is really that useful. So whatever other features the other ones have, I don't really think it was gonna justify it no matter what they do. So, if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. I don't know what's going on with the lighting in this video. Nothing's changed from the previous one, but it seems darker than normal. I'll see if I can address that. Maybe I'll like stick a light on my bed or something and that would definitely improve my background lighting. So I'll try to work something out for that. So if you wanna see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. And if you do want notifications because YouTube can never actually be trusted to push them to anyone, also go follow my Twitter and my Mastodon and you'll probably get updates there. So up on that corner, I will have a playlist that this video will be in and it'll probably be my Linux racing video or maybe my Linux tutorials video. I don't know, I'll decide on that later. And maybe you'll find something in there that you actually enjoy besides this one. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.